Hi, welcome to Top Shelf Takes, the only show on the internet that is made up of complete fact and no opinion whatsoever. Today we're going to be talking about the worst kids in TV and film. not be more excited to get started. We have two guests today. I couldn't be more happy to introduce them. Uh, first up, uh, I'm going to introduce you, sir. Hey, sir. What's up, guys? I'm Steven. All right. Uh, hi, Steven. Thank you for coming. And our other guest, first time comer to the show. Hello. My name is Grace. Grace, great to have you. And as joined, as always, uh, I'd like to introduce... Dylan. I'm Dylan, and this is Tommy. <laughs> All right, and I'm Tim. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce our judge for this episode, Mr. Steven Zubricki. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, I want a good clean match. You're each going to have 30 seconds to present each of your picks for the top six. We're going to start at the six and work our way backwards. Uh, after each of you have your 30 seconds to present your pick, we will give you three minutes to debate, at which time I will deliver the final indisputable verdict. Are we ready? Ready. <laughs> Fantastic. Keep your gloves on. Nothing below the belt. Here we go. We're going to start with Grace. Ladies first. Number six. This is a hot take, but I'm starting with it. It's Kevin McAllister from Home Alone. Now, a lot of people think he's really clever and really cute and like adorable the way he defends his house. I think he's criminally insane, personally. He really wants to hurt these burglars. And are they burglars? Yes. But he's trying to murder and injure them. And I just really think that's going to affect him later in life. My number six. And this fucker almost ruined a great show by being nothing but whiny. And we later found out he was a terrible father. And it's Aang. Aang sucks. Oh. How much time do I have left? Eight seconds. Cool. Aang really sucks, guys. He's the worst part of the show. Okay, my number six pick is going to be Bonnie of Toy Story 3 and 4 fame, but my argument will be more based off Toy Story 4. She abandoned Woody, and I get it. Kids like some toys more than others, but Woody wasn't originally going to be hers. Andy didn't want to give him away, but she insisted. So Andy broke his heart and gave Woody up, and what does she do? She throws him away five seconds later, and I will save the rest for the debate, but Bonnie hurt Woody. We have an emotional take from Tim. Dylan, wrap it up with your number six. I'm going to pick my number six. I'm going to go with someone who just hates fun for absolutely no reason and just can't let anybody be happy. And it's Candace from Phineas and Ferb. All Phineas and Ferb want to do is have a great summer vacation, all 144 days of it. And with, the, with Perry the Platypus along with them, and Candace, no, she just has to try to stomp it out every time. Thankfully, the universe is in favor of Phineas and Ferb, and they never actually get caught. But if Candace could have her way, she would ruin everything that they're trying to do with their summer vacation. And time. All right. That was a, a pretty emotional first round. Uh, so let's get into it. You folks have three minutes to debate starting now. Candace really sucks. Um, Candace absolutely sucks. Um, but she's right. very, hey, she is hey. very justified because Phineas and Ferb are also pretty annoying. Don't, your siblings. don't hate on my girl, Ashley Tiz. Okay? Yeah, she I'm doesn't need that. that. You're hating on Candace. Completely no, different yeah, thing. Get, I'll, get, I'll get back to her in a second. Yeah. Uh, all right. No, no. I'm sorry. Candace is not that bad. No, like, no, she, she has her own issues. She just no. objects onto her if, siblings who just want to have fun. If you had to live with them for 144 her, days, yeah. you'd be that grumpy too. They're just children having fun. But, but I, yeah. I, I, like, also, I would also, argue she's the absolute worst. Like, I mean, she's not, you know, I, I personally, I'm going to segue into my Kevin McAllister argument here because, like, I just, you know, imagine, like, years later, he's in his mid-20s, he's going to therapy, and the therapist is like, tell me about your childhood, and he's like, well, let me tell you about this one time, guy. My time I, like, hit a guy in the face with an iron and, like, nearly killed some men, and they're like, you want to talk about that? But it wasn't one time, Grace. It was multiple times. It was two. Times. And you know what? I would argue. I would argue that um, Home Alone Two: Lost in New York is worse. The treatment is worse. Yeah, but um, he is resourceful. He, he does throw bricks up. He is prepared, he resourceful. Um, but Bonnie just takes Woody, and as Barbie would say, he throws him away. Murder. Wait, going back to Kevin, he wasn't going to therapy. 
We know who he grew up to become. Kevin is Jigsaw from that, Saw. That's that's a fan. That is a take. That yeah. yeah. Prove me wrong. Okay, that, but then that just like egg is just nothing but why. I'm sorry. If he grew up to be Jigsaw, then if that fan theory lives, um, then my point stands. Toy Story 3's plot is about keeping the group together. That is Woody's entire drive through the movie. Toy Story 4, Bonnie is so shitty to Woody that he is forced to abandon that plot and now take on a new one where he has to go that on his own like way. Woody's personal choice. Yeah, it is because Bonnie ruined things. Also, why does every four-year-old have that same haircut? I don't know, but it's bad. I don't like Guys, Bonnie. Bonnie's not Andy. Egg is awesome. Egg sucks. Oh, okay, Andy's... hang on. You're just being elitist about Andy here, then. Just because he's the OG. Bonnie has a wonderful imagination. She yeah. thinks there are ghosts in a bakery. Like, it's lovely. Oh, she has some peace in the pod. So much no fun. imagination is Candace. And she has no imagination. She has to stomp out the rest of them. Why do you hate Egg? Yeah. He's an airbender. He's the avatar. Yeah. Oh, he takes so long. He loses because his ass kicked. I mean, he he abandoned his world. other two children because they weren't special. He oh, I'm sorry, eggs. He saves the world. I've he seen saved. the world. It's not worth saving. Thank you for that impassioned debate. Um, here's what I took away from it. I took away the fact that Aang doesn't suck. That Kevin is indeed resourceful and actually was defending himself in his home. I heard no argument against that. Could have called the police at any time. This is this is squarely between Candace and Bonnie. Squarely. And if I had to go with one over the other, I'm going to go with Candace because I think she lacks a little bit of maturity. So Dylan, you're on the board. I'm going to follow my last round with another sister that is just absolutely dreadful. And the only thing I need to say is one word. Megan. <laughs> I, I concede the rest of my time for this. I'm going to go with Mike from Stranger Things. Uh, Mike started as an Elliot type character who likes an E.T. type character, but that brewed into Mike just being a jackass for season two. And that was acceptable because he couldn't see Eleven, so he was a, a mean to everyone. But then he gets Eleven back in season three, and he's still mean to everyone? No, I'm tired of making excuses for this Finn Wolfhart wannabe character, okay? Mike is mean, he's rude, and he hurts a great show, Stranger Things. He's a really hard protagonist to follow. I don't like him. I like all of the kids better. Oh, time. Now, when shit starts to hit the fan, a good kid knows they need to pony up and listen. And when the only thing you are told to do is stay in the house, <laughs> and for the, for the first three seasons of a show, you cannot stay in the fucking house. You suck. And it's Carl Grimes. <laughs> this kid. Time. Want to meet all. Okay. Um, mine is kind of obscure, but I'm going from for the granddaughter character from the 1995 film Babe, the one about the pig. Um, she has a brief, brief scene. She it's Christmas. She gets a dollhouse. She opens it. She screams, "It's the wrong one! I want the one I saw." television and we see the farmer who has built this dollhouse for her who's also her grandfather it just pans over to his face and we just see his face fall and she just rejects this handmade that's your time wow i don't know who two of these people are so you better spend your time telling me your three minutes begins uh like now. i said Can i forget who you said I said uh, Mike from Stranger Things. Oh, Mike sucks. Yeah, Mike does suck. Mike is a really rude Mike. character, and he's also pinned as our protagonist in a really good show. You pin a um, really mean-spirited, uh, ineffectuate character who is handed everything as a really just full of himself, uh, just really lousy person. I but mean, I would just talk, chalk it up to teenage angst. Like yeah, that's but that's not great. a good Teenagers excuse. Teenagers suck too. That's not a good excuse when all the other kids on the show are likable in some other way. But you no. can't say it's just teenage angst when you're asking me to support this character. I mean, Tim, I would just say Mike is just annoying. And in yeah. terms of like the worst children, for a list of six of worst children ever. It would be the way that that <laughs> granddaughter reacted and crushed that poor farmer's heart. This is literally, it is one scene 
I saw this film only once when I was four years old and it has stayed with me ever since because she screamed, you can look it up, it's on YouTube. She's like, it's the, not the right one. And this, this poor man, you have seen him at various stages throughout the film building this for Christmas. And but, yeah, it, it's about, the film's about Babe the pig, but like this just like, goes for his character development and this child just single-handedly ruined his Christmas. No, but Grace, you just tackled my take on your argument. How does it affect the film the film or series at hand? Mike's uh, bad it actions and, ba and bad ca character development affects Stranger Things for the worse. Yours is one scene. It you doesn't affect- I would argue it affects the, 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 the farmer. I think it, you know what? Yeah, it's in that moment he decides he's gonna kill Babe. That's it. That's what really did it to him. I, I think that is an extreme bias. No, yeah. no, that's what it was. Yeah. No, look it up. Look, listen to the line reading, the way she says it. Tim, I've seen this once, but I was four, and it stayed with me. I feel and like I'm I'm gonna gonna cry. Cry. I'm Megan was a standing. No, Megan. No, Megan, Megan deserved. Megan, those two Megan, idiots deserved it. Megan succeeded in what Candace failed at. Is that you need to clarify who Megan is. Megan from Drake and Josh. I'm Everyone, last name it, Dylan. You didn't know. Hey, it doesn't matter. It's but Parker. It's, Megan, time, Megan took all the strides Candace couldn't even get to is that not only is she coming after her brothers and constantly harassing them she succeeds she gets them in trouble constantly and gets the attention drawn back onto her she leaves them in a treehouse and can't be bothered to help them out when she was supposed to be helping them build the treehouse but did she ruin their Christmas? I yeah. don't think so. Yeah, did Megan, she, Megan, she absolutely ruins their she's Christmas. She's a deciding factor to so kill a pig. Constantly. She just saves the day in the Christmas Tim, episode. And Tim, if you want to talk about adding plot to the show, Megan is a good chunk of the plot in terms of just being the anti the main antagonist. Yeah, your show can't survive show. without a main antagonist, and You're, that's what my, you have right there. Show, and I would argue Stranger Things can survive if Without a protagonist? No. <laughs> it's just, it's just characters walking. Time, time is up. Order, order. I must level with you. That's I have right. no idea who Tommy's person was, and I have no idea who Megan is because I've never seen Drake and Josh. Now, that being said, it seems to me that Megan falls into the same category as a Candace. I'm going to put this squarely between the babe girl and Mike from Stranger Things. And what you didn't address for me, Tim, unfortunately, was the moments where Mike does shine through in his friendship. And because of that, I'm giving this to the babe girl. Grace, number five. My number four pick is Veruca Salt from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Um, sorry, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, 2005 version. Uh, first of all, this girl didn't actually find the golden ticket herself. Somebody else did it for her. She has no gratitude whatsoever. She's never satisfied and always has to go on to the next thing. But she knows what she's doing. She's manipulative. When she doesn't want something, she just like makes a space where she's like, and like freaks out about it. And she just has to have the next thing. And she has she's just a bully as well she constantly bullies and she just has no room. your time is up my number four almost single-handedly ruined maybe the most beloved franchise in history and it's going to be jake lloyd's anakin skywalker I'm going to give it to, unfortunately, the king of Westeros, uh, Bran Stark, uh, the one and only Bran from Game of Thrones. The plot line in Game of Thrones that you always sighed and would, went to go do something in the kitchen when that one came back on. The one who had the best story, uh, according to Tyrion in Game of Thrones. The one who talks like this the whole time and does nothing else. Bran is slows down and a stellar plot of Game Game of Thrones and That's Greg, time. possible. Tim, it's interesting to be a king of Westeros. I'm going to say a former king of Westeros, Joffrey. Oh! Joffrey is downright just evil. He kills cats for fun. He does unspeakable things to escorts and amongst other people that he loves. He kills Ned Stark. And to top it all off, you could argue he's part of the main reason for the eventual crumble of the Lannister ground to power. I think I know who I'm going for right now, but change my mind. You have three minutes. Okay, um, you know what? Joffrey, to a lot of people, is a fun to hate protagonist. I'm not Joffrey saying- Joffrey on my list, just not here, so. 
no, 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 he's not a horrible character. He's a horrible person. He's, he's not a no. horrible character. Uh, you, well, that's up to debate how you, tr that's how you uh, Also, also, here's, here, here's don't. why, he one of the here's why characters. Bran is a better pick for, the, for this list than Joffrey. Joffrey, you get the satisfaction of watching him die. Bran, you get the satisfaction but, of, watch, of watching him win the Game of Thrones. But the fact that he dies and you get satisfaction from that doesn't change his character and still being awful. He, Bran, sure, we could be upset that he eventually gets the claim to power, but when you look at Bran's timeline, when you look at Joffrey's timeline, the difference is staggering. I would That's argue cool. that, um, I would argue that Veruca Assault is worse than Joffrey, Bar Joffrey Baratheon because she has no disregard for anyone that comes into contact with her, and if you come into contact with her, you're either getting bullied or you're giving her what she wants. There's no way, but also just, I, she is just terrible they literally the oompa loompas are like she's gonna go down the garbage chute because that's where she belongs with the trash because she's that awful Great. i would argue she's the worst of the kids Great. she Great. is and you know it you watch the film and you're like she's trash grace veruca salt is a warrior okay and hold on she fights for everything that she gets and does not give up until no, she, yeah, she wants to kill it it's a give fucking it to her. she did it golden ticket she didn't even find the golden ticket she has everything given to her Wait, first of all one of you one of you say one good thing about anakin right now he I actually dare helps you. no i actually i have nothing what to say plot? about he rules the plot because he's in it yeah um, a pl pod racing, he creates- Oh, you want to you want to talk about how good pod racing is? It's one of the better parts of Phantom Menace, Tommy. and it makes- That's like being the shiniest piece of shit. I would argue that his character's dialogue is what fails the character. Yeah, I, I agree. Character. I did not put Anakin on this list because I knew that would be used against me. Veruca Salt's a warning! Your time, your time is up. No more words shall be said. Veruca Salt's a girl boss. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was a hard fought round. I'm honestly surprised that some of you aren't advocating for some of these names to be higher on the list. But given the arguments that I heard in that three minute debate period, I am going with Joffrey Baratheon. My, my pick number three is original YouTube star. We all know him and we all can't stand him. He's absolutely annoying. There's nothing about him we like. It's Fred. He is so obnoxious, so eye-roll worthy, that we don't even need to know his last name. And the fact that this kid gets a movie, it is absolutely sickening, quite frankly, that Fred can just jump on the YouTube and just go all, oh, he's, tell me That's your time. Is. Thank you very much, Dylan. We're going to move on now to Tim. Tim, your time starts when you start. All right, let's talk about kids who are going to grow up to become serial killers. I'm going to talk about Sid from Toy Story, another Toy Story entry. Sid literally doesn't attack small animals. He attacks toys. Then he rips them to pieces. He creates monstrosities. He thinks of himself like a mad scientist. He probably kicks dogs. He is horrible. He is a bad person. And also, he's terrifying looking. What kid isn't terrified of that human animation of the kid going, yee? No, it's so scary. Your time. Thank you very much, Tim. We're going to move on to Tommy now. Tommy, your time starts when you start. There's only one character I have ever seen where the people making it through multiple angles, directors, visionaries have all agreed, wow, this dude sucks. One dude actually made him an alien villain. Just make fun of him. I'm going with Scrappy Doo. <laughs> Scrappy Doo is terrible. Imagine this. The last thing you see in your life is shaking and more shaking and more shaking, and then suddenly you're upside down. <laughs> that is what happens to the fish that Darla from Finding Nemo receives. That is premeditated fish murder. She knew she was going to get excited, and that's what happens to Nemo. Premeditated fish murder. She is a murderer she has she, we deserve her origin story honestly do you think about that that is your time thank you so much grace wow we have some contenders in this round it is going to be head to head i encourage you to change my mind your three minutes begins now i yield this is darla no, no. Here's why it's not Darla. Here's why it's not Darla. Darla has gone on to inspire so many creative Halloween costumes and memes. But the last thing you hear in this life is 
fishing. Why are you sleeping? And that and is one of the funniest parts of Finding Nemo. She's that's giving a bad name to Australian children. That's one of the funniest parts of Finding Nemo. You can't tell me you don't chuckle when you hear fishy, why are you sleeping? No, no because Marla. I'm watching a fish almost die. It, it's called dark humor. And <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Maybe citizen artists we don't know about. We got one I point of view. Serial killers <laughs> consider themselves artists to some degree. I'm We're not going to support it. No, I've never heard that one. Yeah, that's right. When Darla opens the door to the dentist office, they play the. <laughs> It's so funny. We're all laughing right now because it's one of the best parts of Finding Nemo. It's, it's so funny because it's from Psycho and then someone dies when that happens. And it's hysterical. Okay, I don't know who Fred is. I'm sorry, Dylan. You I don't... are the lucky one. Oh, if, um, Dylan, he actually Plus, does have a last name. Oh. If you bothered to look into that. All right. <laughs> oh, no, Fred Sanders. Fred is terrible. <laughs> I think Sid is genuinely terrifying, like in every aspect. He's scary looking. He's scary to like anything that he comes across. Like he like rips things to shreds. There's clearly some problems in this kid's head. He's a loose cannon. He he does interrogations to his toys. But they're twigs, over... Tim. Darla killed a fish, something but that has pulse and she's blood. Just and Grace. live in our beautiful oceans. Grace, in Darla's mind, she's just trying to wake up the fish. In Sid's mind, he comes home from school, and the first thing he wants <laughs> to do is interrogate Buzz Lightyear with a match. That's, that is horrific, okay? That actually sounds kind of crazy. Tim, that's what we call dark humor. Yeah. And you laugh at Yeah. Tim, that's a dark argument. It's flipping back at you. Darla I'm is kidding. not trying to kill something. She is just trying to wake up a fish. She is well, a terrible she, child. I, but, she goes to bite her uncle's finger at one point. He's like, oh, your teeth. And she's like, I'm, I'm a piranha. A strong female character, she, Grace. She all. won't take any one point. She knows there. what she's doing. She knows. I, I think Darla is like actually one of the best parts of Finding Nemo, not making her not one of the worst kids <laughs> like in the film. My friends, this is squarely between two characters. I wonder who those two could be. Is this squarely and, between uh, Darla and Sid? <laughs> and if I'm being honest, there's no contest. Is Sid. Yeah. Sid, it goes I, to you. I had no idea where he was going with that. I I got <laughs> I had an idea. There are two options. You talking about the Tommy, you said scrappy do and that was it. I thought it was good. Everyone is mine to torment. Those are the words of one Joffrey Baratheon. Now, I, I know we have talked about Joffrey at this point, but I would argue for him to be higher. He literally started the War of the Five Kings. No one in this list yet has started a war because of the things he did when he was king. And uh, it just doesn't get better from that. In fact, it gets worse. He's literally rotten from day one. And I, I would argue that he isn't a good character. He's absolutely terrible. And I cannot stand watching him and watching the That's your time. Thank you very much for playing. We have next, Tommy, your time starts when you start. In the near future, when I am inevitably murdered by Demi, <laughs> my tombstone will read, short, chubby, really wish bodily harm on Lucille Van Pelt. That is it. <clears throat> In May of 2017, an article came out in the National Post where writer Tristan Hopper called Caillou quite possibly the world's most universally reviled children's <laughs> program. There are Facebook groups dedicated to hating the show and its main character. There are several change.org petitions demanding that the show be taken off the air. This is a show that's supposed to be educational, but Caillou <laughs> seeks danger. He, see, he doesn't do shapes and colors. That's your time. Thank you very much for bringing the support mission. When you start. No, I win. I just needed to get that out. <laughs> <laughs> you did it 30 seconds. That was beautiful. I have a very controversial number two pick here, and it's going to be argued that he might change the end, but you can't change what you've already done, and never forget that. It's Kylo Ren slash Ben Solo. You want to talk about worst characters and hear me out. I'm saying he's a great character. I'm saying the per he is a bad person. He kills not only Han, he kills Leia. He breaks out into another war. He betrays his family. Who? You want to talk about worst children? 
he murders his parents in the uh, old say you can stop there, sir. Okay. And I wish you good luck in the three minutes of bait round, which begins now. Okay, I, we have three minutes. What are we talking about, Dylan? Yeah, why he's is out. that in the, he's the, out. the best no. part of the sequel trilogy? And you put okay, that as a no, word? No, no, no. no. He's, also, he's also 29 in the sequel trilogy, Dylan. He's still technically... But unhappy. technically, he is someone's kid. And I would argue that, yes, he is. He is and he's anyone is anyone's kid. And Tim, I'm, I'm going to take the argument you using me on, jo on Joffrey, where you said you might like Joffrey. I'm saying you the you your view of the character and how he changes the show or movie doesn't change what he did and makes him a bad person. As a, you want to talk about the worst people, worst children, if you will. No, Caillou is worse than Joffrey Baratheon. I said. I it. was. I have <laughs> Caillou a little higher. As of right, as of right now, there are 248 Facebook groups dedicated <laughs> to hating the show and its main it's character. You do know it canceled, right? petitions demanding that the show be taken off the air over concerned parents who you are- You do know that it happened, right? Oh it's yeah, bad. no, parents are scared that their kids are watching this thing because- Caillou literally hits his I sister. want Caillou higher. Caillou is yeah, a bad I influence. Caillou should be higher. Caillou. I'm gonna say Caillou should be higher. No, what? You, may you I propose something? We move Sid up a spot. We put Darla at three. No, and no, we no. have a surprise at one. No, Ka Caillou won't hold a candle to my number one. But Caillou, oh, you, you, I have a feeling. I don't feel like I don't number one. Me, who is your character? I, I don't Let's know see. who that is. My argument is there are from shades Charlie Brown. from Charlie Brown. There, there are shades. No, she's of nothing. Girl. She's terrible. There are shades of positivity in this, and you're extremely biased. No, she should go hide in a ditch. Caillou, listen to me. My number Caillou, one I will have... defeat Caillou. No, no I one is defeating Caillou. I promise you. I promise you. Tim, all the reasons you're giving right now makes him the worst character. Yeah. I need to insert myself for a second because I need to understand what Grace's proposal is. You want to put Joffrey there and move I'm, what around? I'm, what, what, else, what would change? Oh, I don't know. I just wanted Joffrey at number two. I well, okay. no. I feel like it could go. Sid, I, I feel like you'd swap it. I feel like it goes Sid then Joffrey because I think if you like put Sid in medieval times and give him a little like you know, you know what, story, you get Joffrey. Grace, that doesn't really affect the number two spot, but I will consent to that if you want to swap Joffrey and Sid around as long as the judge says it's okay. But Caillou should be number two because you haven't heard my number one pick. Caillou is uh, Caillou is so terrible because he affects people off of the air. These other characters affect the people in their movies. Yeah, Caillou is arguably that. a positive force too because he has parents that love him in the show. No one loves Caillou outside of the show. You're absolutely right. And the debate is done. We, we, what you guys just proposed was move it was flopping Joffrey and Sid. Joffrey is going to be moved to number three on the list. Sid is going to be bumped down to number four. And the number two spot on the worst kids in movies and television goes to Caillou himself. If you already forget, rewind the video about four minutes to him to hear Tim's argument. Because it is Caillou, undisputedly the worst character, the worst child in the history of the entire world. For all the points Tim has previously said, he is the only person on this list that Tim said has had real outside consequences to children. And what could possibly get worse? And you could talk all about movie deaths, actual children. I'm not saying they died, but I'm That's your time. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Dylan. Tim, you're up. 30 seconds begins when you begin. My argument is for the sound of musics of Rolf Gruber, because I want to ask my other contestants to argue against a Nazi who gives up his Jewish girlfriend. I, re I rest my case. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tim. We're moving on to Tommy. You have 30 seconds beginning when you begin yeah. speaking. <laughs> Josh, can we get some cheating here? <laughs> Tommy? No, you know who my number one is? My number one is Baby Hitler. You know what's worse than a Nazi? The king of the Nazis. <laughs> what is this from? Yeah, you need a film. <laughs> you have 15 oh, seconds. Like I could get someone's child if we go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you adopted a child and all you've ever wanted is a child. Um, and then that child hurts you, blames you, and then turns out to be a 30-year-old woman in disguise as a child who is here to seduce the father, kill him, and ruin your entire life. That is Esther from the 2009 film Orphan. Orphan. A question for you, Grace. 
Was Esther a Nazi who gave up her Jewish girlfriend to the other Nazis? No. I <laughs> was your character really the Nazis? No, but was yeah. your character possibly just a child who lost his way and might have had to live the rest of his life regretting his actions? Are you it? defending Hitler right now? No, I'm defending whoever your character is. I would just like to advocate. I'm not arguing Tim's one because that's pretty damn good. I don't really want to touch that, but I just like to argue for Esther here because you believe she's a child the whole film. You like want to like her, and then like strange things start happening and then everyone in the family's life goes to shit this is a family who's been rocked by trauma they lost a child so they adopted another one to try and like make like bring the family back together and she just like does a lot and she has this like hormonal disorder where she looks like a child and she's actually not but mentally she like acts like a child and has motive and it's just really messed up she the mom like grabs her at one point like forcefully and then is like oh i'm sorry i wish i didn't do that the child goes downstairs and breaks her own arm and then goes upstairs and is like look what mom did she broke my arm when she grabbed me and it's just really just tearing everyone's um family apart i've never seen sound music i don't know anyone i don't even know who you're talking about no <laughs> no Probably never you well. haven't i haven't I, just have. I saw that one scene where she very nicely sings to them, so re mi fa do la mi so. <laughs> Keep that in. Keep that in. <laughs> what was it again? Spice it. No, Give it's actually. <laughs> it's actually. It's do re mi fa so la ti do. No, I like it better your way. Me next to me. The number one. I hear the judge for some Worst kid in movies and TV is Rolf from The Sound of Music. The official, never again to be disputed list of the top six worst kids in movies and television. Candace from Phineas and Ferb at number six. The Babe Girl from number five, for number five. Joffrey Baratheon at number four. Sid from Toy Story 2, Caillou, <laughs> and Rolf from The Sound of Music. Enough said. Let this be decided. Internet, we out. Nazis are bad. <laughs> Hey guys, I hope you had a good time watching. We definitely had a blast making the list. I want to thank both of our guests for coming today. Steven, thank you. It was wonderful to have you again. Thank you for being judge. Uh, we hope to have you back sometime. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Grace, thank you for joining us. You are a wonderful guest. We had a blast. Please come back. We'd love to have you. I would love to come back. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Tommy, Dylan, always a pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you for joining awesome. me once again. Uh, and this was Top Shelf Takes. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you like what you saw or you want to see more. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section below and let us know what your top six worst kids list is. Unfortunately, it won't be very disputable because now the list is fully made, but we'd still love to hear what you have to say. Get home safe, everybody. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>